I think we, I'm waiting to make sure that I have everyone. Okay. Should I let Tom to start? Yeah. Mom? Tom? Tom? Okay, we're just starting recording on our end here. You let me know when you're ready, Tom, so I can let them know. Sure, I only see four council members on, so I know we have quorum, but why don't we give a couple minutes more for uh, the others to join, if possible. I think we're, we're waiting for council members, uh, Peñalosa, uh, actually Mayor Pro Tem Peñalosa and council member Becerra. <laughs> We can get the ball rolling and uh, start maybe we're starting to join us. Yeah, Mayor and Board Members. Are Okay, Mayor. Great. Do we have every, everybody on? Um, I think we're just waiting for Mayor Pro Tem. I believe so. Yeah, he's the only one I see. So I was about to say, uh, you know, um, it was always difficult to get to meetings before because of traffic and, you know, uh, just other other things, commute time. Man, it's hard to be late to a Zoom meeting these days. But it's but but I'm guilty of it sometimes as well. So, well, Mayor Mayor Sarmento, I think we still have the technology traffic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and Zoom and some Zoom meetings going long. So that that always happens. Yes. We'll wait another minute or two and uh, wait till 635 and then we'll we'll have uh, Mayor Pro Tem join us after that. Mayor, I just spoke to Mayor Potem. He just didn't notice the time, so he will be <laughs> uh, connecting really soon. <laughs> there we go. Perfect, I see him coming on. Why don't I go ahead and call this meeting to order? Uh, everybody, I hope everybody is as well and safe, uh, you know, uh, doing as well as we can under th under the circumstances. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, tonight's special meeting of the Santa Ana City Council for January 12th, uh, 2021. Uh, let me just um, begin by telling everybody this is a new system that we're starting with. So thank you to our uh, clerk and her staff for putting this together. Uh, we, we, as as we said, we were going to roll this out. We've already had uh, two meetings um, since uh, uh, to kind of do trial run. So this will be one more. Um, so if everybody can please mute while you're not speaking so we can get uh, clear uh, audio on this. And uh, let me go ahead and begin the meeting. I think somebody's mic is on. Uh, maybe if we can mute that mic. Uh, 
uh, as we're speaking, and then when we're caught, when we're called, we can go ahead and unmute ourselves. But um, let's go ahead and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And you know, wherever you are, if you can, please stand and uh, put your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Let's go ahead and let me turn it over to the clerk so she can call roll. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Council Member Becerra? Here. Council Member Hernandez? Present. Council Member Lopez? Here. Council Member Mendoza? Present. Thank you. Council Member Fan. Here. Mayor Potem Peñalosa. Present. Mayor Sarmiento. I'm here. Thank you. And uh, Madam Clerk, uh, do we have any members of the public that wish to address the council or do we have any written communication that we've received? We did receive um, communications in support um, and in opposition, and that is all on the website. I did not get an opportunity to go through them, and then I forwarded all the emails that I received today, um, all the correspondence. And we do have members of the public who would like to speak. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Okay, um, numbers with the last three numbers, 506, if you would please select the microphone unmute feature on your device. Thank you. You may proceed to speak, you have three minutes. Oh, uh, hello, yeah, this is, uh, this is my, my turn right now, ma'am? 3506? Yes. yes. Oh, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, we could hear you. You may proceed. Uh, good evening. Good e uh, can I start speaking now? Yes. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, 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 first of all, I'm all supportive of the main. First of all, I'd like to say I'm all supportive of the Main Street. We're happy in downtown Santa Ana. I think it's going to be great for our city. And I just hope I see a lot. I, I walk there every day. I, I think we should focus on Main Street at First Street. I think we can make this happen. I think it transitions Santa Ana to be a great city again because this is. Uh, you know, people coming from LA or people coming from San Diego, that main street and first street quarter are very important as for sections as people see it right now. Especially on the first street area, because I see a lot of stuff out there. I see the drug addicts still. I see the pimps out there. One time I see the dead person on the street out there. I hope, you know, the, the first street is important too, because people coming to visit uh, downtown first street coming from south to see that first street quarter. We need to get that ASAP too, because that's a big perception. If I see some bad stuff, I'm going to turn right away, because I remember the old days. When first you had that welcome to Santa Ana, I think we need to focus on first street as well too. I think Main Street is coming along real well too. And then lastly, I want to address too. I know we have a difference of opinion who we, who we vote for and uh, who the president is. I think we always should respect the president's office. And one thing I only have one criticism of, criticism is for the mayor, Mr. Sarmiento. I think your resolution uh, is condemning the violence. It's, it's pretty inaccurate, sir, because I don't think it's considered as an insurrection. I think if you look at historical context, the United States, you make it as a resolution sounds like first first time ever happened in our nation's history. If you look back in 1968, you see that was more of an insurrection in this country. We had a lot more violence back then. I think insurrection is the wrong word, especially for people who do support the president. And also, I think the resolution should have been more of like stopping the condemning of, uh, you know, a more revolution supporting get people out there to be aware of COVID-19 because the signs are not working. More of a resolution that's reduced the crime in Santa Ana. Because as we speak right now, I hear boom, 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 like the wars that I'm here, all these illegal fireworks. I think it more of a less resolution should have been 
the people of Santa Ana coming together, help solve our issues in town, and hope for a good new year. This insurrection, I find very, uh, I find it very offensive, sir, because the insurrection it tells other items, and I've been in countries where violence for people trying for freedom in Iraq and Afghanistan, those are insurrections, sir. I just feel that this uh, resolution is a bit biased. That's all I said. It should more be a resolution for the people of Santa Ana for a peaceful year. Let's get rid of those illegal fireworks. Let's work on COVID nineteen. Let's work on getting schools back together. This to me seems to be more biased, and I'm not sure. I kind of suspect it came from Luke Carrera's office. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have any more speakers? Yes, we do. Um, call Hello? Number zero one zero. Yes, you may proceed with your comment. All right, thank you. Yeah, I have a few comments today. This is Victor Mendez. Um, first and foremost, um, one that addresses the broader city here. Uh, the other night, on Sunday night, I was witness to a, an apprehension of a car theft, and about 10 units rolled up for, this, for two suspects. I know we talked about motor, motor vehicles and protection of public safety. I'd really encourage uh, one member of the council, all the council, to, to discuss this with, with um, Chief Valentin. Uh, it just seemed to be a, a, just an overkill from the standpoint of doing the job right. And like I said, about four or five units were laying around long after the suspects have left. And, you know, we need those cars out there on the street in an effective manner. And as a, as a, as a, as a former crime victim, I don't feel less safe with all those cars in one place. I feel more safe if those vehicles are around doing what they need to do is protect the service. So again, I would encourage somebody to speak to to uh, Chief Valentine about this. It is not only a public safety issue, but as, as, as a, a council member uh, Fan mentioned a few weeks ago, it's actually a, a financial issue and how we use our resources. Second of all, on the resolution, I think insurrection is correct. Uh, I'm appalled, as I'm sure all of you are, about the actions that were taken uh, over the last week. I would only encourage the council to look at our own backyard. During my own campaign, I was subject to a lot of harassment. My family was abused over the phone. There was a, a lot of very uh, harsh words spoken about our, our good police officers, you know, taglines. And I'm still to this day, as I speak freely, called a stooge. Uh, this is not the type of uh, environment I think we need for our children. And if we're going to start condemning, we need to look at ourselves of, at the how, what we enable and what type of positive behavior we enable and what type of example do we set for our children and for our residents. So after this resolution, I hope I'll see great leadership coming out, of the county, coming out of the council in this respect. We just have to do better, and why don't we start with our own community before we start condemning others. Uh, lastly, on the pharmacy issue, I would just make it simpler in itself and maybe ask the council to vote on the resolution for a minimum wage of $15 during COVID. I think that would uh, be really great for these areas. These clerks who are working pretty hard, both in the stores and in the pharmacies. Pharmacy techs themselves don't need a raise. They do pretty well. There's a lot of people out there that are working really hard, working in, in hours and exposing themselves to COVID. And I think a lot, an easy way to administer is to just make a minimum wage to certain uh, businesses in the city up to a certain point. You know, we've given benefits to who and developers. Can we give a benefit to the working people of this city who are putting themselves in harm's way? Thank you for my time. Thank you, Victor. Right, thank, thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Vince. Okay, and um, Zoom ID Luzana Figuera, Figuera, if you would please. I have no comments for you tonight. I apologize if there was for some reason my name put on a on a list. Yes, um, the only way you can participate is by being admitted and so otherwise you won't hear the meeting um, but you can go to YouTube if it's up and running I do understand that we were having technical difficulties with YouTube and I know our video engineer is working on that thank you um, Maria zoom ID did you want to provide a comment Maria, you've successfully unmuted yourself. Did you want to provide a comment? Okay. 
Okay. Um, Let's see who else. Um, I have SCNG Zoom ID. Did you want to provide a comment? Uh, no, I don't. Your YouTube meeting is, uh, the YouTube channel is still not available, so I'm watching it through Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Numbers with the last four, three numbers, 410. Did you want to provide a comment? If so, please select the microphone unmute feature on your device or star six if you're calling in by telephone. Hi, am I in the meeting? Yes, um, you may proceed with your comment. Hi, my name is Derek Smith. I'm the political director for USCW Local 324. Um, I just wish to speak on the item brought forth by Mayor Sarmiento and Council Member Pham in support of it. Um, our members, and we have 20,000 in LA and Orange County, um, have been hit very hard by the COVID uh, virus. And um, the industry in the very beginning um, paid hazard pay, but they phased it out months and months ago in the end of May and early June. Um, this step the council is prepared to take or explore is enormously important. Um, important to our membership. And so I applaud you for considering this and on behalf of our membership, it means an awful lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, caller with the last three numbers, 231. If you wanna provide a comment, please dial star six if you're calling in or if you can Select the microphone unmute feature on your device. It looks like they dropped their call. Zoom ID. Oh, they're all, so. It looks like that's all the, oh, I have one more joining in, Earl Schmidt, and I'm waiting for him to join in. And I think that's the last one that I have. Zoom ID, Matthew Bell, did you want to provide a comment? If so, uh, I, yes. yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I was just going to, my name is Matthew Bell. I'm going to follow up what Derek Smith said. I'm the uh, Secretary Treasurer at USCW 324. And just to give a little more context, uh, we represent some of the grocery store workers and drugstore workers in Santa Ana. And this would impact uh, with union members alone, we're probably talking about 500 workers in the city of Santa Ana just with union members and looking at all the other grocery stores uh, and the folks that have been out there on the front line since the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, this would greatly uh, be appreciated by those workers uh, and also help with the retention. Uh, I think especially during this last period, uh, during December, the number of COVID cases, not only in the community, but in our drug stores has risen over 200% and just retaining employees in the store has been incredibly difficult. And, and grocery store workers and drug store workers uh, take their jobs incredibly seriously on feeding and the community and providing prescriptions and everything that's needed. And just in retention alone, uh, this would go a long way into uh, assisting uh, those frontline workers who, who often go uh, 
go uh, without. And to also put in perspective, uh, there was a report that came out that unlike other industries, the grocery industry and the drugstore industry have had huge profits uh, since the onset of COVID. So, and it's not a concern that, that it's something that these companies can't afford to do. They definitely can. Uh, and it's the, the money that and profits that they've earned should go back into the pockets of those workers that have put their lives on the line uh, since this pandemic started. So I really appreciate the council and the mayor putting this forward and uh, I, hope, uh, I hope it moves forward. Thank you. Madam Clerk, is that it or do we have any others in the queue? Um, let me see if I can go ahead and unmute. Um, there's three of them that are on that is video only and I'm trying to merge them with audio. Oh, it looks like they're calling in and videoing in. So they've already spoken. That's great. So let me see if there are any others before I... Okay, um, it looks like that is everyone and YouTube is now back on. Our video engineer was able to. Um, Great, thank, thank you for that, Madam Clerk. And as we preface the meeting, we knew there, there were gonna be, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's an imperfect process. It's, no, it's a work in progress. So we're getting there, but thank you for all the, thank you for all the good work. So we, we only have two matters for consideration tonight. Um, and the first one is a resolution condemning the uh, insurrection and violence that occurred last Wednesday, January 6th at the US Capitol and also calling for a peaceful transition of power. Um, and I believe um, there is some language that was provided by the by Madam City Attorney for uh, consideration or is, is in the process of being drafted. So um, let me go ahead and um, ask Madam City Attorney if she has any comments to make, if there's any um, presentation or a brief uh, background on this. Mayor, thank you, and members of the City Council. Um, I would like to also point out that um, City Manager staff did prepare the staff report. We just assisted with this matter by proposing a resolution. Um, we understand that council members may have comments, either substantive or, or stylistic, and if you do, we would take those into consideration now and make those changes. But we submit the resolution as drafted and circulated in the agenda packet. Great. Is, um... Anybody from the city manager's office, uh, do, do they want to comment on on uh, the staff report? Okay, hearing none, let me go ahead and bring it I'm back. I'm sorry. Here. Sorry, Mayor. I was having a little trouble unmuting. Uh, Christine Ridge, city manager. Um, yes, council, the, the item before you, there is a draft resolution. <laughs> Certainly now would be the opportunity if you want to make any revised changes, you'd still have the opportunity to adopt it. And then we would make incorporate those changes along with your motion to adopt it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Madam City Manager. Let me go ahead and bring it back to the council. And I know there's virtual hands, but if you can't find that, just go ahead and raise your hand on screen and I'll be able to see you or hear you. Uh, so we'll work it either way. Um, Okay, uh, let, let's go ahead and get started. Let me uh, call on Council Member Becerra. I see his virtual hand up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, let me just begin by saying violence is never the answer. It wasn't the answer back in May of 2020, and it wasn't the answer on January 6th. There's no justification for breaking windows of struggling businesses in Santa Ana or any other city, and there's definitely no justification whatsoever for breaking windows and desecrating our nation's capital. My support for this resolution tonight is not motivated by partisan affiliations. My support for this resolution is motivated by being an American who loves our country and was horrified and disgusted by the unprecedented actions that we saw take place in our nation's capital on January 6th. I wanna express my appreciation to the members from both houses of Congress who did not allow the violence to deter them from returning to their respective chambers and carrying out their constitutional duties in certifying the results of the election. And also to ensure that one of the trademarks of our American democracy uh, took place and is carried out in eight days 
which would be the peaceful transition of executive power. I also want to express appreciation specifically to our Congressman Lou Correa. After he was hunkered down inside the House chamber during that siege on our Capitol, he had to endure despicable treatment at the airport afterwards. And as the news footage showed us, he responded like any of us in Santa Ana would want our representative to respond. Thank you, Lou, for showing the rest of the country what the strength and fortitude of the residents of Santa Ana looks like. I would like to conclude my remarks on the item by thanking our Mayor Pro Tem uh, for taking the lead on bringing this resolution before the council this evening and for our staff who helped drop the resolution that's in front of us. Thank you for that council member. Uh, anyone else, maybe, you know, on, on something like this, why don't we go ahead and kind of do a round robin on this and uh, I'll, I'll call on you and, and go ahead and, uh, you know, just make your remarks, but I'll start with Mayor Pro Tem because I see his hand up. Go ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to thank staff for bringing this forward and uh, providing the language and the resolution. I just wanted to kind of reiterate a little bit what my council colleague, Councilmember Becerra said, you know, I personally, and all of us on this call on this council took an oath, an oath of office that we would, then uh, we solemnly swear that we would protect and defend the constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. What we saw on January 6th, which so happened to be my birthday and that's how I spent it, sitting on the couch watching the horrified terror unfold on national television was an attack on our United States Constitution by domestic terrorists that charged our capital and and held, you know, um, and desecrated our United States flag, our Constitution, our duly elected lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. And it was horrifying to see, you know, one of the most sacred you know, buildings in, in our democracy was vandalized, uh, damaged. And th these are the type of things that we see in countries around the world, not in the United States of America. Countries around the world envy the democracy that our country has protected and, and, and held for, for, for centuries. And this is what we saw, not in you know, 1930, not in 1920, in 2021. And it was, you know, upsetting. I condemn the violence and the, the destruction we saw on January 6th, just as I condemned the violence and destruction we saw all last summer. And the difference though, was that a year ago, you know, people were, were, were upset and marching and protesting for social justice and people's lives, not for a frivolous uh, uh, election fraud that didn't happen. So I'm happy to bring this forward as a city, as a city of Santa Ana, as a, as a protector of our city and the constitution that I took an oath to protect, to condemn what we saw last uh, Wednesday. It was terrible to see uh, and I uh, wholeheartedly stand by this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Let me go ahead and call on uh, Council Member Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I want to echo what my what my colleagues, um, Count, Mayor Pro Tem Peñalosa and Council Member Becerra said. It it was a really traumatic thing to watch on TV, especially, you know, growing up in, in a community like ours. Uh, you know, it, it's a community that that we're we're already exposed to so many adversities and, and to have to to feel uncomfortable and, and to feel that discomfort in your own home as an american that that's not a good feeling and much like uh, mayor pro tem peñolosa said I, I stand with justice i stand with with making sure that we do everything to do right by the american people and and as people were march uh, marching and peacefully protesting last year we saw a lot of people being met with, with, with a lot of aggression, with, you know, folks that were arrested for jaywalking, and to see people break into a, a symbol that that should represent hope and justice and peace, and, and to to make it a place of reckoning, 
what was extremely traumatic and i and i think my colleagues are bringing this forth and um and as a city we condemn that violence thank you council member uh council member lopez any comment Yes, thank you, Mayor Sarmiento. Um, I just want to begin by thanking staff for putting this resolution together for us. Um, you know, I read the resolution about three times, not because I have an issue with it being brought forth, but because of the language in the resolution, um, or I should say the, um, the absence of, of clear language that de describes what we witnessed. And I, you know, in 2018, I, there was nuns peacefully protesting at the Capitol and they were arrested. And not too long ago, the Capitol police arrested more than 150 peaceful protesters, many of them who were sexual assault survivors who were there, you know, exercising their first amendment right to protest the Kavanaugh no nomination. Um, and not too long ago either, people in wheelchairs, people that um, live uh, with a disability um, were arrested for asking for Medicare for all. And so this should never be and will never truly be a conversation about good protesters versus bad protesters because the insurrectionists at the Capitol were white supremacists. And we understand that, you know, the stated purpose of this, this mob of white supremacists was there to overturn an election, to prevent the transition of power, to interfere with our democracy. And of course, I condemn violence. Um, that is not something that, I, that you know, I, I, I think that we all condemn violence. That is a given. I want to be very clear about that. Um, but to me, you know, it's very important to be very clear in describing um, what we witnessed. There were people there that had guns, people there that had riot gear, people there that had zip ties, people there that had bombs. And we need to be specific in naming the problem, which is white supremacy. And so that is what I want to see in this resolution. And we can no longer continue to ignore this um, because it's not going to get us anywhere. And I do believe that when we name the problem, we will be able to work towards finding a solution. Um, and so language to me is very important. Um, and I want to, I want the people of Santa Ana to feel that we're not just doing this for political theater, that we really are standing up against white supremacy, not just in our city, but in our country. Um, and I think that, you know, language, as I said, is important and is, and is going to help us drive policy. So we need to be very clear and specific here. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you for those comments. Um, Council Member Mendoza. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Sarmiento. I condemn the violence as well. And as you know, our country was built around free, peaceful speech and orderly transitions of power. These are the very pillars that our democracy was built on. As a, as a veteran, I gave much of my life and commitment to defending my country, and that includes especially all, all of the people here in Santa Ana. I, um, I take it especially uh, personal. It's painful. I see a darkness across our nation because that same freedom of speech right that we have um, we have witnessed so many of our Americans die for for others to have that freedom of speech is being tremendously abused by by people who think it's okay to to express their their opinions through violence killings and murdering and I see though, I, in, in the same 
sentence that I see all of this sadness and darkness in our country. I see a very bright future with hope and returning to commitment. And you know that very reason is because of the change in leadership. We will have that beautiful America that we are all um, here for. As a, as a veteran, as an immigrant, I especially hold um, this country very dear to me because there is no other, other place in the world that I would rather be. And I'm sure that this is the same uh, sentiments that many of our, our people think about. So this resolution is in, in support of how the city of Santa Ana and it and and us as uh, city officials are are condemning such violence and such um, um, expression of freedom of speech. So um, I am uh, is especially grateful to to be under the protection of of the the red, the white. And the shining stars. So you can be sure that we will have that peace in our nation, and there will be um, there will be um, sunshine and uh, and and comfort uh, once all of this has uh, blown over and the perpetrators have been have been um, up, um, actually. Perpetrators will be imprisoned and who knows for how long, because the, this is an act of treason. And I cannot believe that in our history, in my history here with uh, in the United States, that I will, I never dreamed that I would ever see such treacherous acts. And I am, uh, I am honored to support this proclamation on behalf of the city of Santa Ana. Great, thank you, Councilwoman. Um, Council Member Pham. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, for bringing this item forward. Um, my heart is racing because I am so upset thinking about what happened last week. Uh, it's no secret that I'm a refugee, my family are refugees, and we came to this country fleeing an insurrection against the government. And to see these domestic white supremacist terrorists storm our capital and attempt a coup to overthrow a duly minted election, an election that was fair, that was the safest in all of American history because they lost, is abhorrent. I have to say that. I 100% agree with everything that my council, fellow colleague council members have said especially Councilmember Lopez, who mentioned, you know, these are white supremacists and neo-Nazis. Look through any of the photos. You will see neo-Nazi paraphernalia, uh, paraphernalia, white supremacist symbols, you know, Camp Auschwitz shirts. These are not just your typical Trump supporters. There have been many Trump rallies. There have been GOP rallies. That's peaceful protests. And if we disagree, you know, philosophically or politically, that's fine. That's your First Amendment right to protest. But to storm the barricades, to beat our officers and result in the death of two veterans, one of whom was an officer and later another officer who died by suicide as a result of what he saw at the Capitol that day is worth condemning. And I'd also like to say this is an insurrection. The definition of an insurrection is an act of revolt against civil authority or an established government. This is what these terrorists did. We have to make sure we include that. You know, I also reviewed the draft language and I, I just wanna thank, you know, city staff or city attorney's office for turning this around so quickly. I know that it's, it's traumatizing for many of us to have watched um, the events unfold throughout the day. And I know some callers, some commenters have been trying to equate this to the Black Lives Matter protests of the summer, but that is clear whataboutism. Again, like Mayor Pro Tem uh, Peñalosa stated, the protests were a result of the murder of Black men and women in their homes, walking down the street unarmed. They were fighting for civil rights. And 
all of us here have condemned any type of looting or violence and all of that. But the reality is those protests matter because someone like my mom, who doesn't speak English, who just watches television, told my husband not to drop campaign signs off at night because he's he has darker skin, he's uh, Indian American, and she was afraid he was going to get shot. That's the reality of many people of color in our communities. And that's what the protests are. These treasonous actors were not merely protesting, they were attempting to overthrow the government and hurt our duly elected officials. I've heard, you know, council member, excuse me, Congress member uh, Linda Sanchez talk about her experience halfway through tears because she thought she was going to die. And for anyone to excuse these as a couple, you know, bad actors is completely missing the point. So I definitely support this resolution. I want to add a few particular choice uh, language. I want to make sure that, for example, in the six, whereas, where he says, where extremists with intent to harm life, we include where violent white supremacists and neo-Nazi extremists. It's important to indicate that they had a philosophy that they were trying to promote. So I would like to add that to the resolution. In the next line, I'd like to clarify that it was an attempted coup. Despite their best efforts, despite the guns, despite the IEDs, they did not win. Our elected officials continued with the work of the people and made sure to certify our legitimate election. I'd also like to add a whereas clause indicating that, uh, for example, whereas electronic devices and documents with critical government data left unattended as staff evacuated at break, breakneck pace were assessed, were accessed and taken from offices compromising national security. That's what they did. Congress member from the state of Washington said that his lap, laptop was stolen. How, what do we, what information is on there? What bugs were left? That is a threat to our national security and anyone out there who is in support of our military, homeland security or national security needs to be up in arms talking about how this is a violation and a bigger threat than we may know for years. And the other issue I wanna address is under section one, under the now therefore be it resolved part C I want to make sure that it says elected officials carry out the business of the people of the United States of America and replace the word citizens. While I know that it is citizens who vote for our elected officials, we have many undocumented residents, legal permanent residents who have fought, who have advocated, who have volunteered to ensure that their voices are heard too. And we need to make sure to reflect that in this resolution. And so those would be the additional comments uh, I'd like to see added into this resolution. Um, again, I am extremely ashamed of what some of these individuals have done. And it is, again, abhorrent to see this happening in our country. And I reject that they represent America. And I reject that they represent any of our democratic values of freedom, justice, and access to liberty. So. Uh, with that, I conclude my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Pham. Excellent, excellent comments and um, excellent revisions uh, to that resolution. Um, let me go ahead and just, um, you know, make a few of my own comments. So as many of you, as um, many others, I think my conscience was shocked when I was, um, you know, looking at um, what was happening in, in Washington. Uh, you know, I have friends who work there. I've, I've, I've known people that have staffed there before and to know, um, you know, or try to understand the fear that they were going through was personally difficult uh, for me. But I think when you go, you move beyond the, um, the shock, I think you start realizing that, you know, this was different than, you know, this isn't a protest. This wasn't a protest. This was an assault. And it wasn't just any assault. Uh, you know, this was an assault on a physical building. Um, this was an assault on sort of the, you know, the bastion of what we represent, um, you know, or what represents our democracy. So I think it goes beyond the literal, but really the figurative heart of what 
we are as a, you know, as a free country. And, um, and I think that, um, you know, what's unfortunate is that a lot of us saw this coming, those who, and I, and I think this council may have condemned um, this um, administration in the past for many of the um, hostility they've had towards communities like ours. Um, you know, right off the bat, you know, communities like ours, communities of color, low income people have been attacked by this administration. And this was almost a foregone conclusion that we'd be here. And a lot of people say, well, look, it's too late to do anything. Why do anything at all? Let's just go ahead and work in the interest of peace. But look, to the extent that um, accountability matters and the fact that you can't do anything even on your way out, that uh, is, is, you know, unacceptable um, and really not, it, it's not even unacceptable. It's criminal um, is something that we have to, um, as a community that's been victimized, um, have to stand up for because we represent people that have been living in fear of this administration well before this happened. I think this was just almost a personification or a moment to demonstrate how bad things have been for many people's lives these past four years. So, um, you know, I don't see this as an exercise of the First Amendment, um, you know, uh, move. I see this very different from what happened over the summer, um, you know, uh, for a lot of the reasons that were stated. I'm really upset that we can't do more you know, against the people who enabled this to happen, because there are a lot of people, I think, that have close relationships with the administration, people who supported this president and his uh, bad conduct or criminal conduct in the past four years, they could simply tell him, look, resign, and this would be over, and that would be the right thing to do. We had a president resign, um, you know, uh, Richard Nixon, for doing a lot less than this. Um, and it's unfortunate that we have to come out and support you know, people in Congress who are going to be taking very difficult votes tomorrow and then in the next days to come. So they look to us. We're their constituents. We represent other constituents. And many people have called me just in fear of what's going to happen in Santa Ana, what's going to happen in some of our buildings. You know, are we safe? It really has rocked people to their you know core. They really don't know if, if you know, they figure if the Capitol can be struck. Well, look, we're not safe anywhere. So um, I I would support the, the revisions that were made by Councilwoman Fan, uh, the, the comments that were made by Councilwoman Lopez. Um, I certainly think that if we're going, going to make a statement, it shouldn't be a shy one. It should be an accurate one um, and just call it what it is. Um, it was, you know, it was an assault on our democracy. It was um, the work of people that were uh, very extreme, but these are people that have been coddled and have been cultivated for the past four years by this president and by this administration and by all the people that have enabled him. Um, so that's where I think that um, if, you know, uh, if we want to maybe give some direction to the city attorney, we know this is time sensitive because there's only a few more days left, but nonetheless, I think Congress uh, members that represent us need to understand where we are as a city and where we are as a constituency to them when they go and take their vote uh, tomorrow and in the days to come. So uh, those are my comments. Um, why don't we go ahead and bring it back to um, uh, Madam City Attorney and Madam City Manager, have you guys heard enough uh, direction and, and maybe possible revisions to this? Um, how do we want to frame this? Do we want to incorporate some of those um, uh, revisions that, that were uh, made? I'm Mayor and Council Member, I took notes down and I do have, um, I've adequately captured all of the amendments that were made by Council Member Fan. So if you want to adopt the resolution as amended by Council Member Fan, we certainly can make those changes uh, and issue it uh, immediately. Great, thank you. Let me bring it back to Mayor Pro Tem because I know he, he, uh, you know, kind of led the, led the, led the charge on this. And thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, are you good with those revisions? Anything else you'd like to change or modify? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I want to thank Councilwoman Lopez and Councilwoman Fan for, for both of those revisions and and uh, suggestions. I think they're great and definitely needed. I, I'm kicking myself because I didn't I didn't I just glanced over the citizens' word and didn't and absolutely uh, it should say people, you know, the people's business because there are thousands upon thousands of good people in the United States that call our country home and 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 contribute and and do so much for us. So so definitely thank you councilwoman. Great. Is, I, is that I, I guess that would be a motion to to approve item 1 with uh with the adjustments we just made. I'll second. 
Great. So we have a motion and a second uh, to uh, adopt the resolution as amended. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call roll? M Mr. Mayor, I think yeah. uh, Councilwoman Lopez uh, had her hand oh. up. I'm sorry, Councilwoman, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I also want to thank um, Councilwoman Fan for that. Um, and I just want to be very clear that in the ninth, we're asked, I would like for it to read, we're asked several hours after the attempted coup by the white supremacists. That is my um, contribution here. Thank you. I'm good with that. So I'll make the motion to approve, Mr. Mayor. Great. And does the second approve of that um, change as well? Yes. Great. Okay. Any any other comments before we take roll? Okay, seeing none, hearing none, Madam Clerk, go ahead. Call roll, please. Councilmember Becerra? Yes. Councilmember Hernandez? Yes. Councilmember Lopez? Yes. Councilmember Mendoza? Yes. Councilmember Fan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Peñalosa? Yes. And Mayor Sarmiento? Yes, thank you everybody. Let's move along to the last item, which is a, uh, uh, an agenda item added by the uh, by council member Fan and myself. Uh, this is to consider uh, uh, giving direction to the city manager to prepare an ordinance or a resolution requiring large grocers and pharmacies to provide hazard pay to their employees for a defined period of time. And so um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Councilwoman Fan to go ahead and lead us off in the discussion. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, so this is something that uh, I think many of us have thought about and you know, our lives have just turned upside down with COVID. And I think few, few people other than those who are you know, frontline healthcare workers have experienced that change more than our frontline grocery store workers. You know, many grocery store workers are work living paycheck to paycheck, making minimum wage, bagging groceries, getting our goods, and they never expected to be at the front line of potentially being exposed to a life-threatening you know, virus. And what we've seen throughout the next, the last nine months or almost a year is that while restaurant revenues have gone down because folks are staying at home, you don't have indoor dining, grocery store revenues have dramatically increased, especially for the large chains and, you know, or large uh, institutions that provide groceries, as well as a lot of pharmacies uh, that have continued to stay open and provided, you know, the vitamin C that you're buying and other medications to ensure, um, you know, the rest of us can stay home safely. And so that's really part of the impetus here, uh, especially in the spring, we heard a lot about hero pay, hazard pay, and let's make sure we compensate them. And you know, some actors did, they tried to, or they did for a short while, a small bump, $2 here and there, and then it ended. It ended at the worst time. It ended at the highest uh, bump in COVID infections, right? What we've seen this winter is unlike any other rise in COVID infections in the history of this pandemic in the last year, it's become worse. It may still get worse because of the holidays, despite the fact that a vaccine is on the horizon. And these you know, grocery store workers are not being compensated for the risk that they're taking every day. And they can't just quit. They don't qualify for EDD if they just quit. And many of them have now become the sole breadwinner for their family because other members might be you know, a restaurant worker who's now laid off. And so that's really what this is about. And we're not looking to have, you know, this small corner market of 10 employees, a mom and pop market pay the hazard pay. We understand that there is an economic balance that we have to reach here. But when you're looking at a store like, you know, Walmart or Costco or Ralph's that has thousands of employees across the country and have made record profits despite the COVID-19 pandemic, Workers deserve just a little bit of that, just a little bit of that to get them along because we don't know what Congress is going to do. We don't know if they're going to pass a stimulus check. We don't know if any of these workers are going to be able to make it or make their next rent payment or utilities payment or health insurance payment. And so that's what this is meant to do, 
to help them. And I'm not asking, and the mayor's not asking for an indefinite pay raise. What we're saying is we're putting a time limit on this. You know, we're asking for something like 120 days from the effectiveness of an ordinance if we do approve one so that you know we can see these frontline workers be carried through. And so it's meant to be um, sensitive to the economic cases. So again, we're looking for something where it only applies to grocery store workers and pharmacies with uh, 300 employees or more nationwide. We're looking for it to apply to um, hourly workers, right? Hourly wage workers, they're the ones who are most affected um, in every scenario and every economic upturn, downturn, right? They're the last to get any benefit and the first to lose all protections. And I wanna make sure that we also have anti-retaliation retaliation language. Um, I know that in the Vietnamese community, it is scary. It is scary for someone who doesn't speak English, who doesn't necessarily have the resources or education to really uh, fight for what they believe is right. Um, and by us, if we do approve something like this, having anti-retaliation language ensures that, you know, they, if they are pushing for it and they're encouraging their employers or supporting this and calling in, that they are not fired for doing so. Um, so that is, you know, really the gist of what we're trying to do. And you've heard from some callers that also our grocery store workers and pharmacy workers are at the highest rate of, you know, getting COVID. And so that's also very dangerous. I'd also like to address some um, comments that were received from the public regarding this item. It was in written comments. And again, a huge part of this is just to make sure that we're helping those who are least able to benefit from the economic upturn in the sense that the stock market's going up, but they're not seeing their wages increase, even though they're ones most likely to get COVID. So the rest of us can stay home. That's what we're trying to do. Um, and so I guess I open it all for everyone else's feedback and to discuss this issue. Thanks. Great. Thank you, council member. I think you, you summarize it, uh, you know, extremely well. There's not much that I would add before I bring it back to the rest of the council for direction. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I think for me, what we see is that there are many of these, um, you know, essential workers and, you know, what we thought about of who was essential pre-pandemic and post-pandemic has really changed, right? Um, you know, essential workers are people who are, um, you know, you know, janitors in hospitals, uh, people who are, you know, stocking, you know, shelves at um, grocery stores at their own peril. So it really has made us all, forced us all to realize who really is valuable in this economy. And I think when all of us go out and to buy, whether it's, you know, medicine, whether it's to buy food for our families and for ourselves, we start realizing somebody put those, you know, goods and uh, things up on shelves and made, made it available for us to be, you know, to have this convenience, right? So um, as, as was said, you know, we have, uh, we're home to at least 500 members of these, um, uh, of this group of um, employees. And I think what's important is we realize that they don't have the luxury of staying home and, and working from home and being virtual they have to be out there and they have to, you know, feed their families and help provide. And so that's where I think, you know, the, the distinction lies. There was a really excellent letter that was written uh, from the member of the, and members of the public, you know, where do we stop where, where, you know, where, you know, who else? I think, you know, what was, what was said by Councilwoman Pham was really on point where she said, look, a lot of industries unfortunately have been hit. Um, this industry has done well and, and that's great. That's a good thing because they are providing a service. But I think what's, what the fundamental fairness is, is that an as an industry develops and grows, they should also make sure that their employees that are going through incredible, incredible sacrifice and peril. Um, and we've seen it, uh, you know, with our families, we talk about it, you know, often that we know that when a person goes out and works, they get sick, they come home and they, you know, unfortunately transmit that to the entire household and, and many large households here in, in the city. Um, so, um, I just think that, you know, the direction is, is pretty basic tonight. We don't need to go into much detail. I think what, what I think the Councilwoman Fan and I are asking is that staff bring us back, um, you know, a resolution or an ordinance if it's appropriate, because we know that other cities that have the same concern are going through drafting of their 
uh, ordinances and re resolutions, and then we consider it at a um, you know at a probably the next meeting or you know as soon as we can. Uh, but you know we don't have all the details, which is why we're asking you know uh, the, the city attorney's office to take the lead and with the help of the city manager's office, just to bring us back what a resolution would look like and what an ordinance would look like and what, you know, what are the pros and cons so we could weigh that. But I do think that, you know, as a city that's home to many, many essential workers and especially, you know, workers that um, work in the grocery um, industry that are in incredibly, incredibly um, in danger, that they should be treated fair. Um, and I think that's all that um, this is asking for. And again, I think it has a sunset or a potential, you know, what. Had, had been discussed a, a sunset of, of June. So this is an, an, an indefinite uh, change. So let, with that, let me go ahead and bring it back to other members of the council for their comments. Uh, I saw uh, Mayor Pro Tems and then uh, 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 both council member Becerra and then Hernandez. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to thank you and uh, Mr. Mayor and Councilwoman Fan for bringing this forward. It's something that you know we should have done a long time ago. It's definitely long overdue. I, as we've talked, you know, uh, of course, many different industries have been impacted by by the pandemic, but one that has been impacted in in a in a good way. You know, we want the, these places, these industries to have business. Is your grocery stores, your pharmacies, your CVSs, your Northgates, your Food for Lesses, your Costco's, those, I mean, just over the weekend, I know we don't have a Costco in the city, but me going to a nearby, to the Costco at the city over, I mean, it's harder to get into a Costco than it is into the U.S. Capitol because of just how busy the Costco's are, the, the, when you go through any grocery store in the city, they're, they're, in, they're, very busy there's also uh limit they're limiting people that come in because of how you know trying to social distance i was at cvs on bristol and, and on warner and maine just last week picking up my mom's prescription and there was you know as i walked towards the back of a pharmacy the pharmacy section there's this poor young woman uh employee of cvs in the cold and flu section helping like four different people with cold and flu over the counter medicine. And in my head, I'm thinking all those people in there are probably, you know, experiencing some kind of COVID symptom and they don't know it yet. They haven't tested positive. And here you have this young woman trying to just make her, her you know, a, a paycheck to, to provide for her family and being exposed to whatever's going on out there. You know, uh, people in, in our grocery stores, our pharmacies, our CVSs, they've been the, the at the forefront of all of this for the last year going, you know, going on to a year now, nine months. And it, it's it's been tough for them. I could, I could see it, you know, working long hours. I know initially in the beginning, they were opening these grocery stores up at six, five in the morning for, you know, for older uh, citizens and, and staying open very late. And it's, you know, they are true heroes, you know, in a way that they are, have been heroic. Um, they've been out there stocking our shelves and providing, making sure that we have the, the essential needs that we need at, at our home. So I'm definitely supportive of seeing something come back to us, uh, what that looks like, like you said, Mr. Mayor, whether it's a resolution or an ordinance, I'm not sure yet, but I would be supportive of, of, of moving in this direction. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I think uh, Council Member Becerra was next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I wanted to thank you and uh, Council Member Pham for bringing this before us. You know, uh, growing up, my dad worked in grocery stores. And, you know, Mayor, as you said, you know, the, the definition of what an essential worker is uh, today during the pandemic and what it will be post pandemic has changed. It's not simply someone that works in a hospital or is out enforcing the law on our streets, but it's the folks that had to go to work and had to provide essential services for the rest of us to be able to not have to go out and to try to flatten that curve and minimize the spread of COVID. With that being said, my father was in a grocery store. My father worked for bigger chains and he was able to be represented by uh, brothers and sisters at UFCW, but during the uh, toward the end of my dad's career, he was 
in smaller grocery stores. And so when I hear these thresholds as to what we would consider for hazard pay, my dad would be out. <laughs> and, and I know growing up, I mean, we weren't living the lap of luxury. So I can only begin to imagine if I grew up during a time like this and my father working for a small grocer, it would really be helpful, I imagine, for us to be able to uh, have that um, hazard pay. So what I would ask uh, for our staff to do, I think, again, I think where we're going with this, um, whether it's going to be a resolution or ordinance, I think we're heading in the right direction. I think our hearts are in the right place. What I would just ask our staff to do is just also consider what the impacts could be if we were to expand that scope of where the hazard pay would um, be in effect. Because I, I just, I, I don't think COVID really understands, oh, sorry, this is a grocery store of 300 or more. We'll just go ahead and avoid this store. So I think a lot of frontline workers are putting themselves out there in, in danger and to exposure. And I, I think that we should just, at the very least, and I, I think Council Member Pham mentioned that, yes, we are trying to be sensitive to the economic realities of some of our small businesses, but I just don't, I, I couldn't sleep if I were not to at least ask for us to consider what the impacts would be for smaller businesses because those workers matter just as much as somebody working for a larger store. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Councilman. Uh, Council Member Hernandez and I think uh, then Councilwoman Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and thank you, Council Member Fan, for bringing up such a critical um, the topic right now. I think much like Mayor Pro Tem Penalosa said, it's, it's long overdue. Um, what I would like to see is I'd like to see it expanded, um, much like Council Member Bassetta mentioned. I, I think that we need to integrate um, different uh, different sectors of essential workers. And for me, you know, you know, having you know, grown up in this community, I think that one of the one of the uh, biggest impacts that we've had is our healthcare workers. I would like to see it expanded to them. Um, I would also like to see that expanded to the uh, workers that are city testing sites. And um, moving forward in the future, I know that we're going to have vaccination sites. So I would like to see it be inclusive of that. And lastly, I would say our city service workers, um, workers that are that are essential to the functioning of our city of Santa Ana. I, I think that we, we can't forget about those individuals. And I think it would it would be important for us to include them as well. Um, and lastly, I, I want to know what constitutes large. Um, is that based on the number of employees? Is that based on the size of your business, um, size of your building, the amount of people that you can have at occupancy? I, I would like to know those details. And, um, and, and that is all I, I have to dimension. Great, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Lopez. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sarmiento, and thank you, Councilwoman um, Pam, for bringing this. I, I really wish I would have had enough time to add my name to this, because I do think it's so imperative that we that move, that we move quickly. Um, you know, this is an issue that is very personal to me, as many as, as, as you know, um, and have come to learn about me, you know, I was at the front lines of this pandemic and my entire immediate family is considered an essential worker. My sister is a nurse. My dad works at a grocery store, you know, I'm union grocery store. My brother is a driver for Grubhub and, and it goes on. And so I think that this is a really great way for us to um, show people how much we appreciate and care for them. Um, and grocery stores are you know, grocery store workers are some of the least paid workers in, in, in our economy. Um, and every day they get up and they go to work knowingly, knowing that they can be, um, that they can come home sick um, and not knowing how COVID is going to impact their physical health, but their financial budgets at home. And so, you know, I worry about my dad every day and I wish he didn't have to go to work during a pandemic, um, but our bills don't stop. And I know Mary, like many American families, their bills don't stop either. And so hazard pay is nothing, absolutely nothing 
um, compared to the billions of dollars that these big box chain stores like Costco, Walmart, Amazon have made in profit. Um, and just to give you an example, uh, Kroger made in 2019 $16.7 billion. And in 2020, they made $63.4 billion. So they are doing really well. And, um, you know, the stay-at-home orders have been expanded. Orange County is still in a purple tier. Essential workers, we have all heard this. They don't want any more applauses. They want actual tangible solutions to the problems that they are seeing and experiencing. And, you know, um, Council Member Fan, you can probably elaborate on this, but as I did say, my interpretation of Big Box is Amazon, Walmart, Albertsons, Target, Ralph's, Bond. You know, it's not the small time, um, small businesses, small uh, mom and pop shops. Um, and so, you know, I, I, in doing my due diligence, I learned that Long Beach has also an urgent ordinance in place. And the County of LA also has, some, has similar policy in place. Um, and I do think that it is imperative that as a county seat that we help lead Orange County um, and stand up for our working families. And so I am very much supportive of seeing an ordinance here in the city. Um, and I just wanna leave you all with this, that you know, my dad migrated from a war-torn country um, and he is one of the strongest human beings that I know. And um, you know, he, hearing him speak about consistently having to mourn the loss of his coworkers is something that is very devastating to him and to us. And so I just want to ask all of you um, to be supportive if you can, and if you have any questions to reach out to any of us and we can answer them. Um, and, you know, furthermore, to be kind to all of the retail workers that are getting up every day um, and providing the basic human essentials for us. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that, Council Member. I think everybody's spoken um, with the exception of, and, and I see uh, Council Member Fan's hand up, but Real quickly, let me just ask Council Member Mendoza if she has any comments. I think that'll wrap it up with, with everybody and then I'll bring it back to you, Council Member. Council Member Mendoza, do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, I thank you, Mayor um, Sarmiento. I concur with my colleagues. Um, it, it's right on point. Uh, I believe that the people who have um, continuously uh, risked their lives and gone into work at the grocery stores and the pharmacies are deserving of, of a little extra pay so that they can continue to su provide support for their families. Um, in, in my own um, family, I have three essential workers and they don't get any hazardous pay or any combat pay. And so if I can help uh, individually here in the city of Santa Ana to bring uh, some kind of equity, equity to these uh, frontline workers, it is my pleasure. That's why I was elected and my fellow um, colleagues were elected so that we can represent each of our, our, of our residents in, in this manner. So I'm very happy and honored to support this resolution to compensate the people who risk their lives for us. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Um, I think council member fan you you had your hand up yes so uh thank you to all of my colleagues for um the questions and proposing ideas <clears throat> one of the um things i forgot to mention was actually regarding the the amount of hazard pay <laughs> one of the things we were looking at is four dollars of hazard pay uh for a period of 120 days for hourly workers um you know that's limited it's not a huge jump for a super long period of time. It's really, again, just to help bridge folks through this time until we can really get everyone vaccinated and be safe. And um, thank you so much to Council Member Lopez for discussing your family's exposure um, during this time. My sister is an essential health worker. She's an optometrist and she has to see patients every day and she touches them every day. And so she just got her first vaccine dose, but you know, that still doesn't mean our family is safe or bubble is safe because, you know, we don't have the vaccine and we still have to go to the grocery store and these other families are doing that. Um, I do want to address 
um, Councilmember uh, Becerra's comments regarding the smaller businesses. I think one potential solution that staff may want to look at for those that are not considered big box, or at least what I suggested as considered large grocer or uh, pharmacist, which means um, employers with 300 or more employees nationally as a large grocer or la large pharmacy is to look at a tiered system. You know, maybe if you have 100 employees uh, nationally, then you might only do $3 or $2 or something like that. So if you have a smaller business, you know, you still have some type of hazard pay, but it's not so onerous where a mom and pop couldn't afford it. And I think that's the last thing we want, but we want to be able to respect that issue. So just a, you know, an option to throw out there for staff to look at. Um, I also think the comments that Councilmember Hernandez made regarding um, our other essential workers is uh, incredibly valid, and especially with our healthcare workers. Um, I think that we just, I don't have any particular facts on what, um, you know, whether it's these healthcare agencies or how they're doing or, or these hospitals or service providers. I know at least, again, anecdotally, my sister's optometry office was actually closed for a period of time. Uh, during the COVID shutdowns and then was opened up again and she's you know, seeing patients. Um, so that is an impact on the small businesses that are still healthcare providers. Um, I only have facts regarding, you know, the big stores or like Trader Joe's. <laughs> I go to my local Trader Joe's on South Bristol and it's packed every day, even if there is a, a social distancing required. Um, so that's really where we wanna make sure that those who have enough to share do so and for those who are not that we, you know, find ways to spread the wealth anyway, if we can. Great. Thank you for those comments. I know that all of us have kind of given quite a bit, but uh, council member Basar, I think you, you have one more comment. I, I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to thank council member Fan for clarifying the uh, amount and uh, simultaneously suggesting a potential way to address trying to make sure that all of our essential workers, or at least more so, more of them are um, taken care of. And uh, the other thing I would also ask staff to look at is, you know, we're looking at this as hazard pay. We're looking at this as uh, impact due to COVID. And right now, what we've been hearing from the county is that they're hopeful, God willing, they're able to accomplish this, that they're going to have vaccines out to the majority of the population by midsummer. And so I would like to ask our staff as they're looking into um, potential items to bring back before us that they look at rather than just 120 days, maybe uh, rather 180 days, something to kind of take us closer to where we will have uh, more of the population vaccinated and our, um, our frontline workers will uh, face less of a hazard being out there doing the work that they're doing every day. Great, great comments, everybody. So um, I think uh, staff, you probably have sufficient direction. Is that uh, is that good for you, Madam City Attorney? Yes, I, I just wanted to, to uh, mention that we will continue to monitor the um, other cities in the County of Los Angeles. I know the board in LA voted 4-0 recently to move forward. Um, they expect to have theirs finalized by January 26th, which would be in advance you know, for you to bring it forward. Um, I just wanted to mention that their measure, I think uh, Council Member Hernandez asked, well, what about the size? Their measure is going to apply to publicly traded companies um, or those that have at least 300 employees nationwide and more than 10 employees per store. So I think what we'll do, many of you have offered your comments, is we'll work with city staff in the city manager's office to provide you different alternatives. And also, if any of you have input um, during the interim, please you know, feel free free to forward it to us and we'll just provide it to you at the time and then you all can decide exactly what elements you want to include in your ordinance. Excellent. Thank you, Madam City Attorney. Um, so let me go ahead and wrap things up. I think those were the only two items. Thank you everybody for your comments. Um, we do have, um, you know, we've had many losses, unfortunately, in the city. Um, many of us that we probably know personally and um, we do know somebody that uh, was close to the city and close to the county for many years. And um, I want to go ahead and uh, give that opportunity to uh, 
Council Member Mendoza to go ahead and adjourn this meeting in his honor uh, and in his memory. Uh, but before that, does anybody have any other uh, comments, any other comments as we wind up? Um, Madam City Manager, any members of the council? Council, I, I was waiting for the uh, city manager. I thought I saw her, uh, her, her um, unmute. Uh, oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, no additional comments, but uh, we I did take um, notes on all of the feedback, so I'll work closely with the city attorneys to return this item for your consideration. Great. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Becerra? I think you're muted. There we go. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to All right, are we good? We're good. <laughs> okay, one more time. I just wanted to um, ask that all of us keep one of our young library workers in our thoughts and prayers, uh, Miriam Lopez, who <laughs> helped out with team space and tutoring at the library is currently suffering from severe brain trauma and she's fighting for her life as we speak. So I would just ask that uh, we all keep her and her family in our thoughts and prayers. Great, thank you for that. Um, let me go ahead and uh, pass it over unless anybody else has any uh, any closing remarks. Um, turn it over to um, Council Member Mendoza to go ahead and adjourn in, in the memory of Ray Virtus. Go ahead, Councilman. Thank you, Mayor. I think you're on mute. Thank you, Mayor Sarmiento. I asked um, this meeting to be closed in honor of a good friend and community leader, uh, Ray Raymond Burchess. Uh, uh, as uh, we learned early this morning that he had passed away due to, to COVID. He had been hospitalized for about two weeks and unfortunately his body was not strong enough to sustain the, the rabid uh, symptoms of, uh, of uh, COVID. Ray Virtus was a community leader. He attended local um, uh, high schools and he belonged to many community boards and committees here in Santa Ana. He was a very conscientious and kind and a giving man. He uh, volunteered for, to protect his country. He served in the Marines for four years. He served honorably and upon his discharge, he opened up his own landscaping company and he continued to be involved in the community in that way. He then, um, his landscaping company then turned into what is currently the Virtus Consulting Company. So, uh, Mr. Virtus was always a, a very um, present person, giving in, in to his community and always uh, uh, being present in whatever it is that uh, was being asked of him. He was always uh, volunteering his time, his, his, uh, his resources, and and all all of that was due to from his own the kindness of his own heart. Ray Virtus was a strong advocate for issues that were important that are important to our community for decades, and he has always been someone that we can count count on. Ironically, it was his strong advocacy to ensure that Santa Ana residents had access to COVID-19 tests that resulted in his early death. We are in extreme gratitude for this last COVID-19 testing advocacy for our residents and his decades of dedication to our community. I requested this meeting be adjourned in, in his memory and he leaves many, many good friends in Santa Ana. He is ex an extremely uh, um, powerful advocate for community involvement. 
And thus, Ray Virtus deserves the honor, the gratitude, and the pre appreciation from the city of Santa Ana. Thank you, Mayor Sarmiento. Thank you, Council Member Mendoza. And you know, I, I, just before we adjourn, I just want to say a couple words um, uh, about Ray. So I knew Ray personally, and I've known him for years. He, um, you know, he was he was famous for having his Halloween parties that he would have at his house in Orange. And I know he helped uh, many of us when we were young elected officials and kind of introduce us to, um, you know, issues and, and different people. And he played a big role in many of our lives. I remember he was very involved in uh, then Congresswoman Sanchez's, uh, uh, you know, uh, races and her rise to, um, to the Congress. Um, you know, so, you know, finally, when I bumped into him after years, he was at many of our CARES uh, mobile sites throughout the community. And I remember seeing him, he was older, he looked a little bit more frail but he was there almost at every site that I went to. And I would tell him, Ray, why are you so close to everybody? And he had his mask, but nonetheless, I mean, he was really, I think in the wrong place, unfortunately at the wrong time. Uh, uh, but I think, you know, his dedication to the work he was doing and his belief in delivering the service to a community that was going through a lot of suffering um, was kind of who Ray was, and that epitomizes, I think, his life, is that he dedicated himself to this one last um, effort that really embodied his his life, which was service and trying to make people better. And so, you know, we, um, you know, we know that he worked with Medica, and, you know, Medica worked with us as our vendor to provide and deliver these, um, uh, the, the, the testing units. Um, but, um, you know, he will certainly be missed, um, and, and to many of us who knew him for years. Uh, he also leaves behind a son, Vincent, uh, and um, who was living with Ray, and also uh, three sisters and two brothers. So let's adjourn in Ray's memory. Let's remember to keep each other safe and to care for one another. Um, life is very, very precious, and it's very fragile right now these days for many of our neighbors, friends, and people that we know. So uh, we will adjourn in his memory, and we will uh, have our next regularly scheduled meeting on Tuesday, January 19th. Thank you all. Be well.